All right, today we are going to talk about the difference between level four new versus established outpatients. So just as a review, in the outpatient setting, there are five levels of service for problem-focused visits. And the nice thing about it is for each set of CPT codes, the last digit of each CPT code corresponds to the level of service. So we're going to focus today on the difference between these two services, level four new and level four established. Here is the difference in reimbursement between these two services. For the $54 you make going from an established to a new, the question is, what is the, the additional documentation you need to satisfy the criteria? And the important thing to remember is that a lot of times the work involved is already being done. But if you don't remember the additional documentation needed to satisfy these criteria, you're going to unnecessarily lose as much as $85 downcoding yourself from a level 4 to a level 3 or even a level 2 new patient. So remember that there are three key components to all visits, the history, physical, and medical decision making, and that is how your documentation is divided for billing purposes. I can't stress enough that your documentation is the only way that a payer can know how to quantify the work you did during a visit. Now the key to successful documentation is not increasing the amount that you write, more and more volumes of text do not equal increased reimbursement. It's understanding the guidelines and effectively describing the work that you did to meet the criteria. But keep in mind, no matter how much you document, the medical necessity should drive the reimbursement that you deserve, not the copious amounts of documentation on the paper. And I'll stress this with an example. If a patient comes in and all they have is a stub toe, it doesn't matter that you can document the how it describes the stub toe by more than four descriptors, Document more than 10 review systems, a full family and social history, examine more than eight organ systems, and even give them a prescription for a high-dose Motrin. At the end of the day, it is still just a stub toe. Despite the volume of documentation meeting a level 5 visit, you cannot upcode from the level 2 reimbursement that you deserve based on the medical necessity. Now, I think it's important, since we're talking about level 4 visits, to understand what does a level 4 visit look like? What are the common presentations when the patient walks in the door? So some of the most common things that you'll see is a patient comes in for the management of three or more chronic conditions. Even if at the end of the day you make no changes to that patient's care, um, you may have to make a decision that there were no changes needed in their management. Now the key here is if there was medical necessity to manage those chronic conditions. And let me give you an example. Let's say a patient comes in for a six month follow up on hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol. Well, today you adequately manage all three conditions and decide that the diabetes and high cholesterol are well managed, but the high blood pressure is out of control. So you see them back in a week. A week later, just because you can document the status of the diabetes and high cholesterol, there's no medical necessity to manage those problems a week after they were well controlled. So you can't bill for the status of three more chronic conditions in that situation. If a patient comes in with a new problem, and that problem's management includes prescription drugs, that potentially is a level four visit. Now there are some exceptions to this rule. If a patient in isolation, meaning there's no comorbid conditions, there's no secondary complaints, all they have is an uncomplicated UTI, acid reflux, low back pain, a URI, or vaginitis, those are all considered uh, level three problems even if you document that they need a prescription med. Patients who come in with a new problem and the diagnosis is still unknown at the end of the visit, that's potentially level four. The classic example here would be someone with a breast mass. At the end of the day, I don't know what it is, but the workup involved would be a moderate level of medical decision making um, to, get them what, to get them the answer they need. And finally, if a patient comes in with a new problem, and even though they don't need a prescription at the end of the day, the workup of that problem is significant, meaning that they need labs, they need radiographs, they may need some other study like an echo, PFTs, EKG. Maybe they need you to review old labs or talk to an outside physician. That amount of work would also amount to a level four medical decision making. And that's all assuming that the documentation in the chart completely reflects the work that you did. So now the main difference between the new and established patient is really in the amount of history and physical that's medically necessary to obtain and that is adequately documented in the chart. So in tabular form, when you're comparing the criteria, for level fours, whether they're new or established, I already mentioned that the medical decision making is going to be identical criteria. And if you think about it, whether it's a new or an established patient, whatever their presenting problem is, you're going to have to do the same amount of, of 
work assessing the HPI uh, component. So that's the same. What is different is the amount of supporting documentation, the amount of review systems, past medical, family and social history, and the amount of exam that you need to do to determine how to manage those problems. And here, you can see that the review of systems is substantially different, going from a minimum of two to a minimum of 10. In fact, it, um, not meeting any one of these criteria here could limit your reimbursement to a level two or three. Meaning, just the fact that you forget to do a family history, the fact that you fall one organ system short on physical and do seven instead of eight, any one of those things would prevent you from re getting reimbursed at the level four that you deserve, even if the work was done, if the documentation wasn't there. In addition, for an established patient, it makes sense you know them well, so you only need to satisfy two of the three key components to support the level of service. And Medicare doesn't state what those combinations have to be, but in general, your medical decision making is what's going to drive the majority of, of your documentation. So it's going to be medical decision making supported by your history or medical decision making supported by your physical exam. For a new patient, however, not only do you have to satisfy the medical decision making, but the history and the physical in order to support your level of service. So, uh, in summary, these are the most common reasons that you may unnecessarily get downcoded from a level four um, new patient. The patients here for chronic disease management and your HPI is inadequate. Either you forget to, to document the status of three chronic conditions, or if they come in with a primary chief complaint, you don't describe it by four more modifiers. If you document less than 10 review systems, forget that family history, or um, examine less than eight organ systems, any one of those things will prevent an appropriate new level four patient from being reimbursed what you deserve. So let's do an example to highlight what we've just learned. Mr. U of L is here for a six month follow up of diabetes, heart failure, and Crohn's disease. So let's talk about him in the light of he's an established patient. I've nicely assessed whoops, the status of his three chronic conditions right here. For diabetes, how do you assess their status? You wanna know what their home sugars are. You wanna know what they're taking if they're having any untoward side effects like hypoglycemia, and today, what is their A1C? So I've decided this patient's diabetes is well controlled. In my heart failure patient, how do you assess the status? You want to know what their EF is. You want to know what their baseline exercise tolerance is. This guy's dysmic at one block, but that's no change. He's not having PND or thopnea or edema. And you want to assess their med use. He's not taking his Lasix on Sunday mornings before church. And finally, for the Crohn's disease he's following up on, I want to know what his bowel habits are, if he's having abdominal pain, and any side effects from the medications he's taking. Other review systems pertinent in this, in this patient, no polyuria, blurry vision, numbness or pain in the feet, or an ACE-induced cough. I've listed his medicines and done appropriate med reconciliation, and it's totally medically necessary to know that uh, socially he's gotten a new job, and that helps him now afford his medications. On physical exam, I've documented a nice physical. He, I've reviewed vital signs here. I've documented a thyroid exam. In a heart failure patient, you want to document their jugular venous pressures, do a full heart exam, look at their lungs, um, feel their belly in a guy with Crohn's disease. Again, look at edema in a heart failure patient and do a nice diabetic foot exam. So I look at labs, and um, for my patient, I want to know what their A1C is, and I want to know what their renal function and electrolytes are, and on someone in sulfasalazine, what their CBC and LFTs are, and I've documented all that. So my assessment today is that my diabetic is a type 2, well-controlled. I have a patient with chronic left-sided systolic heart failure with no comment about an exacerbation, and this guy is prone to the small intestine. And in the details of my plan, I document that I want to continue the medications he's on for those problems. I'm ordering disease-appropriate screening labs uh, based on what they have and the medicines that they're taking. And I make appropriate referrals for um, things like opto for a diabetic. Finally, at the end, I put down when I'm going to see them back to reassess all of those at a medically necessary interval. What level of service did I provide this patient? Here is my table blown up for documentation criteria, and let's look at it uh, piecemeal for this patient. First of all, you have to remember that every single visit needs a chief complaint. It needs to be an acceptable chief complaint and clearly stated. So acceptable, what does that mean? If the patient is here for follow-up and there's no comment about what follow-up they're here for, that is unacceptable. You need to state the conditions that you're seeing them for today. Sometimes the chief complaint is in the patient's own words, especially when they have an acute problem. But sometimes a chief complaint is going to be based on your plan from the last note. Here for a six-month follow-up for these conditions. 
Okay. Here for the HPI, my format here is the status of his three chronic conditions, which we nicely went over. That will satisfy the criteria for both level four and level five HPIs. For the review of systems, we've got the endocrine system addressed, pulmonary, cardiac, GI, constitutional, neuro, musculoskeletal, and opto. And all of those were medically necessary based on the patient's chronic conditions they're presenting for follow-up. And finally, for the past medical, family, and social history category, I've addressed two of those three categories. So if you look in the chart here, my um, HPI meets level five documentation criteria, my review systems is only level four, and the past medical family social history meets criteria for level five. And you need to satisfy all three criteria to choose your level of history. So this is a nice level four detailed history. If we go on to your physical exam, first I'm gonna start with the 97 bullets because they're more black and white. The acceptable bullets that we hit today include one for the constitutional, looking at the vitals, one for eyes, one for looking at the thyroid. Now keep in mind here, I'm never gonna stop checking JVD, my heart failure patient, but that is not one of the accepted bullets for the 97 exam. You get one for palpating the heart, one for auscultating the heart, one for listening to the lungs. Again, I'm gonna to continue to listen to bellies, but that's not a bullet in the 97 exam. I'm gonna palpate the abdomen, look at edema, and here I wanted to point out diabetic foot exam is not one bullet. You actually are looking at pulses, skin, and doing a neuro exam. So based on this example, I have 11 acceptable bullets, and if you look at the table, 11 is one short of a level four exam based on 95, 97 guidelines, this is a level three. When I audited against the 95 guidelines, now I'm looking at organ systems. I've got one for constitutional, one for eyes, one for cardiac, and so notice, neck is not an organ system, it's a body area, and you're not allowed to mix organ systems and body areas for the 95 exam when you're counting. Pulmonary, GI, skin, and neuro. So I've got eight organ systems examined. That's enough for my level four detailed exam based on 95 guidelines. And the good news is an auditor will always give you credit for whichever set of guidelines is more advantageous to you. So in this case, level uh, 95. And now let's go on to medical decision making. When we look at problem points, we've nicely managed three established problems that are well controlled, each is worth one point. That's the minimum three points I need for level four problem points. If I look at data gathering, all I've done is review old labs and order new labs. That gives me one point for labs, right there. And finally, for risk level, I've managed prescription medications as well as I've managed two or more chronic conditions. Either one of those criteria alone would put me at a level four or moderate risk. And I want to make the comment, continuing current meds or continuing the name of a med is evidence that you manage prescription medications. If you just say continue treatment, continue above, continue current management, none of those specifically address medications and you may not get this level four credit. So here for medical decision making, I only need to satisfy two of those three criteria. This is a nice solid level four medical decision making based on problem points and risk level. So now putting this all together, I've got level four medical decision making. And for a established patient, I only need to satisfy two of those three criteria, meaning that decision making needs to be supported by history or by physical. But in my example, actually the history is level four, the physical is level four, this patient is a nice solid level four follow-up patient. Now let's take this same patient and make him new to my practice. How will the same set of documentation pan out when we look at the criteria for a new patient visit? So here again are the criteria for that established outpatient. And the medical decision making component is identical. But now the way I think about history, the amount of documentation for history is one level of work higher. So what happens here is the amount of history I now need for my level four new is the amount I would have needed for the level five established. And in addition, now I need to satisfy the criteria in all three key components. So looking at this patient, Here's our level four medical decision making, but now all that work we did in history will only satisfy level three history criteria if the patient is new. We're falling short by a couple of review systems and we did not take a family history. Physical exam, 
um, also falls short. It's a level three physical based on 95 guidelines, and if for some reason we were mandated to use 97, this would have actually audited out to only a level two new patient. So, what went wrong and how do we fix this? So this talk is not about upcoding, but it's about taking credit for the work that you've already done. And by and large, what I find is this work was done and we just fell short in documenting it. So here in the HPI, we have no problems. Let's look at the review systems. We fell short with two review systems. If this patient was new to my practice with Crohn's disease, we know there's a high prevalence of depression and Crohn's is associated with skin rashes. I asked about those things, but I forgot to document them. If I remember to document these three words, that would have taken me from the eight review systems in blue that we already had to now adding the psych and the skin. And that would have been the 10 I needed. If you look at the physical exam based on the 95 guidelines, I've got seven organ systems here. I need eight. I guarantee I assess this man's gait. When I have a diabetic, how can I not? I need to know if this patient's at risk of things like Charcot joint with a bad gait. Or for example, the guy has Crohn's disease. A musculoskeletal exam would be totally relevant because it's associated with many arthropathies. Psych, I would have assessed their mood because that helps me with any disease patients come in with. We know there's an increase of depression with patients with chronic disease. Those are all medically necessary. So the pearls I'm going to leave you with is remember, new patients have to meet all three key components, history, physical, medical, decision making. The biggest mistakes I see, make sure the HPI is complete. For a new patient, pay attention to the quantity of review systems. When it's an established patient, it's almost impossible not to hit two. But for a new patient, you now have to hit ten. Make sure you take a family history in a new patient. Lack of a family history in any new patient has already limited you to a level three new patient visit. And by and large, do not forget to document the things you did and the things you asked that were medically necessary. But again, do not add things unnecessary just to upcode and try to get reimbursed more. And maybe one of the best examples I use, which is a real example, I told the resident to the completest note because I knew he did more than he said he did on physical. And what did he add? He added a testicular exam in the guy that was here for something totally irrelevant to a testicular exam. That would look to an auditor as fraud and upcoding. Thank you very much, and have a great day.